Well, hello everybody, my name's Mr. Lee David Carter, and I wanted to talk about dysphoria. It is such a big topic, such as uh, when's the right time to transition, coming out, coping mechanisms, being able to find yourself and your place in the world, uh, being able to maintain your identity, support, feeling alone, isolated, reaction to society, family, friends, workplace, and so forth, mental health, RSD, known as rejection sensitive dysphoria. So we talk about coming out, for example. But before I mention this, um, dysphoria. Now, people like myself, basically the mind and the body is an unusual place. Dysphoria is um, those that were born here and there's a mismatch in the assigned birth sex that they were assigned with. Um, that they feel that their body does not match the assigned sex they were born with. So they feel like the opposite sex. And I suffered through a gender, gender identity crisis for 40 years. It came from a different generation, and I researched into it for years. Whereby it wasn't heard of, it wasn't spoken of. And I feel that it's very cruel for anyone growing up through puberty to go through this and, you know, suffering with gender dysphoria, or dysphoria, as I say. So it's really important that people are educated because scientists have proven that it's biological and I've spoken about this before on national TV over a decade ago. I was at university at the time before graduating and I spoke about it being biological. Um, that basically when the mother's pregnant, when the baby's developing in the womb, the, um, there's a mix up in the genes, which you know you learn at school, XY, XX, and those genes, uh, genetically, don't connect with, um, consciously, the mind doesn't connect with the body when you're born here. You feel you're trapped in the wrong body. And it feels like you're living in a foreign body, anybody that's going through trans, transgender, whether you're born male or female, and feeling like the opposite sex. Okay, so it's a cruel thing anyone going up through puberty to go through this. Now, when is the right time? Well, I've been asked this question on BBC Three Counties Radio back in April 15th, um, 2015, by a well known TV psychologist. She appeared on this morning as well, and saw on BBC Three. She said, Lee, do you think it's a good time, you know? Do you think it's fine for children, young children, to go through the transition? And I said to her, I don't feel that it, it, they should be too young, not while they're going through puberty or just about to go through puberty, because they're still growing, and um, you know they still need to find themselves because the gender spectrum system now is so vast. You know, there's he, she, her, him, they. Um, people are trying to find themselves, you know, regarding their gender, their identity, and their place in the world. Um, because in America, they have blockers, and basically, that's it's a secondary sex in which they stop block the puberty that they're assigned with at birth in order to transition into the opposite sex, the sex that they feel they align with. So this is well known in the states, called puberty blockers. Anybody like myself that's been born this way and uh, feel like you know the opposite sex to what they were assigned at birth. So that was my feedback on it. Okay, when is the right time? Well, I went for it when I was forty, and I've researched into this for years. Basically, that you know, um, it's been around for centuries, and. Nature's not perfect, and after appearing on Channel 4 regarding the phallic pasty culture, here we have a free story of three different men, 
and one of them was born with micro penis, didn't know he was male or female, and the other one, you know, just lost his penis through infection, through uh, drinking drug substance abuse and trauma. And there's me, born female, I'm feeling that I was in the wrong body. So it gives a different perspective now with regards to masculine bees, what you call masculine bees, masculinity. The world is changing. So when is the right time? The right time is right when you're ready in your life, on your journey, when it's time for you. It doesn't matter what age you are. As long as you're not too young, you know, growing up through puberty, because you're still developing and growing. Too young, that young. But if you had 20, 30 years left of your life and you're doing it in middle age, it doesn't matter, you know, when you're doing it at 20 or 30. You know, you'll know when the right time is. Of course, then you've got coming out. You've got all that to deal with. The emotions, the feelings, the worry of discrimination, rejection, discomfort, defamation, such as your name, how you address a person, he, him, she, her, they. The reaction of people, the reaction of family, friends, Parents, first port of call, that's the external, internal, am I trans enough? Someone finds out, you know, who you are, and, 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 then, and, and then you're outed. And then there's the workplace, the passive hatred of the community, um, no joy, all that, you know, being investigated, curious, intrigued. Many feel like they're walking around and it's like trickery or deception. Because you know, being discovered, or many need to feel that they need to be more masculine. They're worried about society and what they may think. And you've got the issues of bathrooms. Many feel that nervous, anxious. They'll hold their urine in trans men, um, and they low self-esteem, body image, passing, confidence. In passing, validation, looking for attention. They may even use um, the other bathroom in order to feel safe. All those feelings, all those emotions. And then you've got dysphoria. You've got the social side of it. Um, when you look at socialising, you know, whether it be the LGBTQ or otherwise, there's a lot of factors, emotions, trans people, you know. They feel they're all different, there's no right or wrong, everybody's different. But this is some of the emotions and the feelings that people go through, a majority. Then with dysphoria, you've got, a, you've got issues such as, am I masculine enough? Have I got nerves in my penis? Is my chest masculine? Are my hands masculine? What about my voice? Or my feet? Everybody's different. Then you've got coping mechanisms. Being able to decrease the dysphoria. Some may just cross dress. Some may have the top surgery and they will do that. Um, in order to feel more in alignment with who they are. And they have the mastectomy, they have the male chest. Or many will go as far as having surgery in order to, to decrease it and be fully complete and have the bottom surgery, like myself. It all depends on the individual and being in alignment with who you are. Then you've got coping mechanisms. And this comes into mental health. People that suffer with dysphoria will feel They'll have sleepless nights. They won't be able to sleep. Some may feel suicidal. After watching the TV show on Channel 4, you know, someone born with micro penis, this person feels suicidal. The other one phew, turned to substance abuse. 
I've worked for many years in the care sector, working around mental health. Even though I was in a dark place and I suffered abuse, rejection, abandonment, dysphoria, big enough. So much. And coping mechanisms, mental health, you know, people say, well, you know, dysphoria is a mental illness. Mental illness. No, it's not. I've worked in the care sector for many years and I've seen, it's, it's kind of funny really because here I was in a dark place for, for a long period of time experiencing all these things through dysphoria and otherwise. And here I am on the other side now, helping so many, helping others that suffer with mental health. You know, when a, when a loved one passes, like a parent, it's traumatic. So if you suffer with depression and anxiety, that's classed as mental health. People with dysphoria suffer with this. Hypertension, nervousness, not being able to sleep, suicidal, anxiety. Some may turn to substance abuse because they can't cope. Others will find ways of decreasing the dysphoria. And that's why we've got uh, medical uh, help now to find a solution to it, such as having top surgery or going as far you know, as, as, as having a bop surgery, taking hormone treatment. First port of call, and then top surgery. Some may not do that. They may just have the top surgery, but not have the bottom surgery. Everybody's different. Remember, it's about being in alignment with who you are. Okay? There's many in the LGBTQ, they've had top surgery done, but they haven't had bottom surgery done. There's many that have just had the hormones, but they won't have any type of surgery. So it all depends on the individual being in alignment with who you are. Of course, speak to people, find out, do your research, talk to people in the LGBTQ community, but it's about being in, in alignment with who you are and being yourself. So these are coping mechanisms. You know, it's being able to find yourself, your place in the world. There are many out there that don't have any support. Their family have disowned them, the family union. And that's why I say get onto Facebook, get, get into social media, get into chat rooms. Approach trans organisations and networks because there is going to be somebody out there that is going to be supportive and you're going to find a good friend. Maybe better than the ones in your own family with how you've been treated. Many are rejected and abused. So it's really important to get that support. And it's important to support one another within the community. So we're looking at dysphoria as being a mental health. No, it's not. It's not a mental health. When you're born here, a dysphoric, which is scientists proven, it's the symptoms that you suffer from dysphoria that class it as mental health. I wanted to put that across, okay? I thought it was, it was an important message. Okay. So, when you look at dysphoria, it's such a big subject. There's a lot involved. So I'm gonna sign off, and anybody that's watching this, um, thank you for watching this video. Um, any questions you wanna ask, them, obviously, please message me on info at leedavidcarter.com <clears throat> okay and uh, thanks for watching this and uh, come and join me on my journey yeah so I'm speaking out now as a fierce voice and an advocate here and uh, yeah just PM me and uh, hit the subscribe so I'll speak to you soon bye for now